Hi. Um, my pleasure to be with you guys today. Uh, so, Michael Filipowski, I'm with General Motors, uh, Venture Manager in our global innovation. And our team, essentially, we create um, startups uh, for, for GM. And um, today, I wanted to talk to you guys uh, about the Connected Mobility and Data Marketplace uh, working group that I have the pleasure of uh, co-chairing with the uh, illustrious uh, Roger Berg uh, at Denso. Um, yesterday, I was very pleased to see there were three other talks <laughs> that centered around a decentralized marketplace. And to correlate with that, um, we have the largest working group. So there's a lot of uh, community interest um, around this topic, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited about that to share more with you. So before I really go into that, let me just share why GM is here overall. Um, so we see um, blockchain as aligning with our 000 mission. Um, zero crashes with um, the potential of a decentralized uh, marketplace to um, um, create sensor sharing, to train um, autonomous vehicle AI. We see that as, as supporting that vision. Um, with emissions and um, congestion, um, those are a tragedy of the commons type problems. And I think uh, blockchain is especially well geared to internalize those types of um, externalities and put them back into the price um, of, of a trip. So uh, that's why we're participating in Mobi overall and why you also see us as, as uh, being involved in the EVGI group. Um, so with that, uh, for this talk, what I'd like to do is I'll tell you guys uh, some of the opportunities um, that I see with a decentralized data marketplace, uh, why there isn't one already, so some of the problems, and then what we see in our working group as the way forward, uh, and some of the uh, use cases that we're discussing. And we are the youngest uh, working group within Mobi. We've been around uh, for about two months. So this is more of a way forward than, than anything else. And we're you know, at a starting level and really excited about getting your guys' ideas um, you know, in, into this vision. So with the opportunities, um, it, what I'd like to start with is around safety. I think that this topic is pretty core to all OEMs. It gets everybody on the same page, gets, gets everybody excited. Um, you know, transportation is vital, but it does come at a great cost. There are 1.2 uh, million casualties globally uh, per year. It's the second highest uh, cause of accidental death. And, and that's staggering. And here we have uh, some potential to solve that uh, with uh, sensor sharing, so your vehicle can see around corners, um, with a, a heat map of where those accidents are happening to, uh, so that people, um, and especially these first responders that you see here, uh, can respond to those accidents um, faster. So I, I think that that is something that uh, cities, and I know um, LA is, is here in the room, and some folks uh, from there uh, I think can get really excited about. Um, but for OEMs, um, you know, the, there's a great opportunity for additional revenue as well. Uh, with cleaner, more comprehensive data sets, take GM for example. We have uh, a very high number of connected vehicles because we started this pretty early with uh, OnStar. But you know our data set isn't comprehensive. It, you know we have vehicles um, in North America, South America, in in China. Uh, but you know we're missing a lot of the other parts of the world. So uh, in a lot of use cases, the, the people want uh, a global uh, view of uh, data that we're capturing through our sensors. Or in the case of uh, states, to take it from a meteorological uh, viewpoint, there are about 
100 weather stations, um, you know, for an average sized uh, state. And you're only ca capturing humidity, temperature, um, you know, air pressure at those one point. So that leaves like hundreds of miles between those weather stations in, in some cases. You can have mountains there, you can have quickly changing uh, weather patterns. And um, through aggregating um, OEM data sets, you, you can instead have millions, in a way, of mini uh, weather stations reporting on that, like vastly improving uh, what you can do around prediction of um, road surface data, uh, road surface conditions due to weather. Um, so with that, like, why has this not happened yet? Like, the, the promise is great. What are the problems? Um, so, you know, if, if you look at this picture, um, I mean, what, what do you see? I mean, it's not shark. This is a GM, Ford, uh, Honda, BMW, et cetera. It, it's our industry. Uh, we've been uh, heavily competing, you know, for the past hundred years, right? Uh, we've been slicing up the same pie. And what we need to get used to, I think in the future is more collaboration, is baking a whole new pie instead of slicing up um, the same old one. Um, also, you know, th this data is all in silos. Um, everybody has their own data set. Even uh, internally, this, this can be true for many OEMs. Um, thirdly, uh, combining this data into one central location um, can cause problems. It can create a honeypot for hackers. If you combine all this data into one place, um, it just makes it more attractive um, you know, for, for somebody to compromise it. Um, with this said, there is a burgeoning effort already um, with data aggregators you know, who play this role. However, the scope of their solution is um, quite small. Um, and they're the classic middleman, all right? Uh, a problem that, uh, that blockchain can solve. So what, what is our solution and what, what are we thinking? And you know we're about two months in, so this is again uh, I think highly evolving. Um, with a decentralized data marketplace uh, that's powered by blockchain, federated learning, and, and homomorphic encryption. Uh, now all those things are a mouthful, but let me give you um, kind of an example. I, I think that's more understandable. A few years ago, um, maybe a decade ago. Uh, th there was a Netflix prize, right? And this was like a big data um, challenge where Netflix uh, opened up its data set of um, how people are rating movies, um, what they are clicking on, and asked uh, data scientists to come up with solutions um, to have an improved algorithm. Right? And I think that this is one of the areas that best differentiates a decentralized uh, data marketplace from what data aggregators um, can do. All right, with data aggregators, the data is monetized, but it is all moving uh, downstream. Um, with a decentralized marketplace, you have the ability to uh, have that flow essentially be uh, bi-directional, almost similar to what the EVGI group was, was talking about, where if you're labeling uh, that data, if you're improving uh, algorithms, the um, machine learning, that can be sold back to the OEMs as well. So it's not that you're only selling on the, um, on the downstream side, um, but we can be benefiting from data science teams and companies, et cetera. So, what are the technological uh, enablers, um, you know, of, of this decentralized data marketplace? So, I see six. Four of them are blockchain-related. Two of them are not. Um, so, there's, of course, um, 
you know, the, the access. So uh, the permissioning of who has this um, access to this data, who does not, uh, for what period um, of time, and privacy. Instead of uh, trading um, PII, like social security number, uh, date of birth, et cetera, um, you have a, a public and private um, key hash. And non-repudiation. So I think this is especially important in insurance uh, type use cases or accident um, history type type use cases, where you need to know that what this vehicle or this set of vehicles is reporting uh, happened, it has not changed in time. It's the truth that the sensors um, captured, and microtransactions. And you know this is a work in progress, but you have great work. Um, and layer two lightning uh, technologies and, and sharding that is bringing uh, that promise. So not blockchain related, but also an enabler. Um, federated learning. We talked about like that honeypot of um, of data, um, and this is where so th this essentially present, prevents that where you can uh, keep your data in the silos, but uh, send algorithms or machine learning in to be trained, um, and bringing out essentially the, the insights or the changes in the algorithm out of those data sets, and uh, homomorphic encryption. So this is essentially uh, another security or obfuscation layer where um, if you look at this data, it's not intelligible to any of us or interpretable, but the um, mathematical uh, properties uh, between those sets of data are kept consistent so that machine learning can still uh, benefit from it. So that's how we see you know, the, the kind of promise and the technical aspects of the decentralized marketplace working. Um, and I want to go through a few use cases that we feel are promising. And it, the, that's where, we're, where our working group is at right now. We're you know, weekly talking about use cases, which ones are uh, the ones we want to pursue. And I could put hundreds of, the, of them up here. Um, but I put the ones up that are focused on safety. Because I, I think among OEMs that those are the types of UK use cases that we can most quickly um, align on. Um, autonomous vehicle uh, AI training, you know, I, I put as the most long term. I think politically within each OEM, this is uh, the hardest one to open up. We need to show uh, o, you know, OEMs and our leadership value before we get there. Um, and so where you know, I'm thinking of, of starting uh, is safety use cases that are quite simple, um, such as connected vehicles, uh, when there's an airbag deployed for each OEM, they um, surface that, that data back up. Right? And if we can give first responders, government, cities, a view of where are those airbag deployments happening um, in a heat map or a point map, that maybe has severity attached to it as well. Um, it, you know, that is very low-lying fruit and, and can be very impactful. Um, and I'm not talking about monetary. I'm talking just about saving lives. Um, in the middle, I think, between these two, um, we have sensor sharing. And uh, this is a use case that I think blockchain is especially good at, at solving. Um, having a, a trust score and a reputation for certain vehicles uh, or certain uh, sensors even within, within that vehicle uh, can allow vehicles to uh, see ahead, see around a corner. Um, you know, just to use Michael Vo's past employer, uh, using the, the Tesla three cars ahead of you as um, the eyes for, for your vehicle. I think that's extremely powerful. Um, so th uh, this is perfect. I see I have eight seconds left. <laughs> so uh, thank you, guys. I really appreciate your time. And um, I'm happy to 
answer any of your questions. Thank you. How are we operating the CAN bus for Upgrading. the future? Upgrading. To increase uh, security. You, you know, I, I really can't answer that. I know that we have <laughs> uh, upgrades coming, but it, is there something specific you're looking for? Sorry to turn the question back on, on you, but is it like speed or? Oh, no, just, I mean, brainstorming uh, like inner and intra private blockchains within vehicles as kind of the evolution of the CAN bus networking and how sensors communicate with each other to make sure there's uh, authenticity and security. Because right now, obviously, CAN bus can be very easily hacked. Well, uh, you know, I, I think um, similar to other working groups, um, we're going to need some startups in, involved in this one, um, you know, as, as an enabler. Right, um, I think that similar to the VID POC, um, this probably requires external hardware in the short term um, to to be potentially put in the vehicle to en enable this blockchain bit, and in the long term, perhaps that that can be embedded. Um, but I should probably mention. Um, you know, I, at GM, I'm more involved in the business cases and, and such. And um, you're coming at this point to the exhaustion of my technical depth. I would have to lean on uh, our uh, chief blockchain architect and, and other folks, I think, to better answer that. I've got a question was, for GM. No, no, no. I, I was going <laughs> to sort of semi answer the question, right? So oh, I thank think, you. I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think a lot Ford of, and again, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert either. But I know a lot of the manufacturers now are looking at using Ethernet, right, to, for, to allow the subsystems within the vehicle to communicate. So I know you guys just announced something recently, right? I think it's on the Cadillac CT5. I okay. think it's the first new one that actually has, is using some Ethernet. I won't talk about what we're doing, but it's, it's something similar. See, here at Moby, we bring, <laughs> we bring rivals together where they support one another in their questions and answers. You know, it, yeah, the Ford's headquarters is only a few miles away from ours, so clearly there's been some leakage, but yeah, it's excellent. Thank you. <laughs>